What would happen if you crossed cute girls doing cute things and you're typically set guy? Well, <laughs> I've been killing slimes for 300 years and maxed up my level is exactly what you'll get. But this is my review of this series, a series that aired in the spring 2021 anime season. So let's jump into it. I've been killing slimes for 300 years and maxed up my level follows a lady named Aizawa. And you find out quickly that she is an office worker that is unfortunately passed away at work. And as she kind of goes into the afterlife, she ends up running into this goddess or something that essentially says that she kind of favors females. And so she's going to help her out. She's going to give her a new life in this other world. And she offers, you know, if there's anything special you want, let me know. And as I was like, you know, just eternal beauty would be fine. You know, immortality, essentially. But uh, she like agrees to it, sends her off to this fantasy world where she's going to start her new life. So here's Aizawa, and she quickly finds this nearby house that it seems like this goddess has kind of, you know, left for her to, you know, occupy, and she's going to start her new life here. And thus begins this 300-year cycle where essentially every day she will travel to a nearby village, and on her way she'll kill a few slimes, gather the gems that they drop, turn them into the adventure guild there, get a little bit of spending money, buy some stuff at the grocery place, and then go back to her home. And because she has immortality, she does this for 300 years every single day. And eventually, the newest Adventure Guild attendant essentially asks Aizawa to see if she can see her stats. I mean, like, you know, she's curious. She, you've been living for 300 years. I want to see your stats. He's like, no, I've been killing a few slimes every day. It's nothing big. And she ends up finding out that she has a skill that actually increases the amount of experience she gets from each kill. And then after doing this every single day for 300 years, she maxed out her level. And somebody overhears this, and this ends up becoming the talk of everywhere, basically. Everybody finds out there's this witch over here that is maxed level, super powerful. And so a lot of people keep trying to come to either test their strength to her or just curious about this witch that is, you know, so powerful. Which becomes an issue for Aizawa because being that she was overworked in her previous life, she wanted to enjoy a life that was quiet, normal, and away from everything. And every time the door knocks, this is tragic to her. She's like, oh, somebody else is bugging me. I just want to be left alone and enjoy my life. And over time, this turns into her essentially building a family. Even though she wanted to be alone, over time with her experience with these people that are essentially visiting her, she ends up creating bonds that are so much more stronger than her desire to be alone. Actually, her desire to to be with and to protect these new family members that she's kind of building. Whether it's a dragon that she bested that ends up supporting her as a maid, or these two slime spirits that end up turning into essentially her children, and so on and so forth. There's actually a point where this series actually makes fun of the idea that it's essentially presenting new characters over and over. As Aizawa basically points out, you know, all we need now is just an elf. And then suddenly the knock on the door, it's an elf. <laughs> but for a majority of the beginning part, that kind of turns into the butt of the joke, is the idea that she wants to be alone, but yet she's constantly bugged by people. And the humor that comes in these new characters that slowly kind of surround her and build this family that she ends up nurturing. And it almost seemed as if they were never going to relent on this. As it went on and more and more and more and more characters are added to her cycle, it really did make me feel like, you, you know, eventually you're going to run out of space in a room. <laughs> but it was to its benefit because I really did like a lot of these characters that were added to the roster. Having these two children that are always kind of doting on her. Having this demon that almost wants to be more powerful than her but she dotes on her, so it often breaks her from her nature. Which comes into my thoughts of the series as a whole. I really do love the characters that they presented. I, I think the chemistry of this series is absolutely fantastic, and it's obviously kind of enhanced by the fact that I love Aizawa's character. She's, like I said, wants to be alone at first, but quickly turns into more of a nurturing nature, as almost like a mothery figure to a lot of these characters. And then add into that the fact that it's Aoyuki in a different take than we usually get with Aoyuki. Either she's, you know, loud with the case with Spider, uh, so I'm a spider, so what? Or she's more diabolical with Cruel Tepes and Seraph of the End, or uh, Clementine with Overlord, or Saga of Tanya and the Evil with Tanya. And definitely with a case of her being seemingly overworked these days, I'm glad to see her having a role that's not as loud and <laughs> where she can kind of relax. Uh, but like I said, it's a, it's a fantastic cast of characters that surround her that really do give it a solid case of of chemistry. And now, granted, I won't I won't say that this series is doing anything groundbreaking. 
it's not trying to push the levels of storytelling or elements of isekai in any way. It's more of a case of, like I said at the very beginning, taking the cute girls doing cute things concept and throwing it into an isekai as, again, this of obviously pretty much everybody that ends up joining Aizawa in her home is all girls. And they all have their own cute personality or quirks that kind of give them their own identity and ultimately good punchlines in the end. What really did surprise me, though, even though I can say that, honestly, the mechanics, the the jokes and everything like that, it's not really kind of pushing boundaries here, is the animation itself surprised me. Now, granted, for most of the case, it's, it's pretty basic animation and the style is good, but every now and then it kind of surprised me with this really crazy amount of animation. Like, I mean, to give an example, they have this one moment where Rosalie, this character, is on this Leviathan on this balcony. And at some point, another character comes onto the balcony and they start talking about something. And just the visual styling and this increase of animation frames and the flow of the character and their hair and everything was kind of impressive. I mean, yeah, you can give it to certain action scenes like, yeah, when they had the blue dragons versus the, the red dragons. They did some pretty crazy over the top stuff or the, her first fight with Laika in the first episode, which doesn't surprise me too much. On often cases, they'll you know, put a lot of effort in the first episode and the action scenes. But this is something that, like, over time, they would just have these little subtle scenes where it seemed like they ramped up the animation, like they just randomly pulled in some uh, amazing animation director to kind of throw a lot of effort into a scene. And it really did impress me. So not not saying that the entire series, like, over crazy animation and, and super uh, ufootable levels, it's just every now and then there's this little attention to detail that, kind of surprised me and I do have to give it credit for that. Overall, I did enjoy this series and I'm a I'm a fan of the cute girls doing cute things idea and I do like uh, isekai shows. I'm not burned out like a lot of people are and I think this did a lot good. I, I think there's no, there's not really a lot of emphasis on the isekai factor. This is kind of one of those series where I, I think they probably could have just had a random max level girl that's in a hut nearby and it would be the same story. There, there isn't anything here what that's hitting on our previous life. They did touch a, a little bit on the idea of overworking yourself as uh, her first uh, addition to her family kind of puts a little bit too much effort into something. And Aizawa was kind of like, you know, stop. Because she knows. she's She was overworked in her previous life. So she finds this like, no, don't ever do that. If you're tired, stop. And that's about all you get for that isekai element. It's just that she's in this world and now she's building a harem, basically. It doesn't hit on, you know, well, I had this in the previous life and now I want it. It doesn't really hit on any of that stuff. It's really just, here's this girl with a lot of girls around her. They have fun, goofy fun. Cuteness ensues. And that's really all you're really going to get here. Like I said, don't really expect crazy storytelling or anything, but I did enjoy it in the end. But anyways, that's my review of I've Been Killing Slimes for 300 Years and Maxed Out My Level. If you like this review, please leave a like down below. Comment, let me know what you thought of the series or if you're going to check it out. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video if you can. And y'all take care.